All right, back to another album review. It's been nearly three years since the last time I reviewed anything by Linkin Park, and today's review is on One More Light. It's the seventh studio album by Linkin Park, and it's their last album to feature Chester Bennington for his untimely death on July 20th, 2017. The album was recorded between uh, September, 20, uh, September of 2015 and February of 2017. The album was self-produced since Mike Shinoda and Brad Delson were the primary producers. Well, some of the songs had additional production. It was mixed by Servin, uh, yeah, Servin uh, Ganea, uh, Chris Gallen, and John Haynes. It was released on uh, May 19th, 2017 on Machine Shop Records and distributed by Warner Brothers Records. What well, sets this album apart from Linkin Park's previous albums is that it's mostly centered around pop, with some focus on electronic rock, pop rock, and electropop. Just for comparison, um, Hybrid Theory and Meteor and uh, Meteora were mostly new metal. Its Midnight was mostly alternative rock. A Thousand Suns had a heavy focus on electronic rock and experimental rock. Living Things was lighter on the electronics while simultaneously well, focusing mainly on electronic rock. And The Hunting Party had a heavier sound than the band's other work. When it comes to taking this album in the direction of pop, I believe it was the band themselves who decided on this, rather than their management or their label. In order to promote this album, Chester Bennington and Mike Shinoda appeared on an episode of Good Mythical Morning back in May of 2017. I'll include a link to the, uh, to the episode in the description. It was awesome to see that at the time, but watching it now gives us a sad reminder of what would happen to Chester two months later. Now we'll get back to this. Anyways, uh, let's talk about the songs. The sound starts with Nobody Can Save Me. Just by listening to this song, you'll notice that it sounds completely different compared to what you'd normally expect from Linkin Park, considering the fact that this album is primarily centered around pop. The song itself has additional production by John Green and vocal production by Andrew Baluki. The song is passable and we're only getting started. The next song is Good Goodbye, which was released as a promo single on April 13th, 2017. I should mention that the song takes a well, takes a turn towards uh, the direction of rap rock and even even pop rap to an extent. Prior to this album, I didn't even know that pop rap was even a thing. And the song is notable for, fe for featuring Pusha T and Stormy. I mean, uh, Stormzy. No, I have no idea who those people are. The song does have additional production by Jesse Shatkin and vocal pro uh, production by Andrew Baluki. A music video was made, and I'll include a link in the description. Up next is Talking to Myself, which was uh, released, uh, released as a single on July 25th, 2017. Sadly, that was five days after the passing of Chester Bennington. The song does have some focus on R&B, which I never expected from Linkin Park. The song was co-produced by J.R. Rodham. As has additional production by Andrew Jackson and vocal production by Andrew Baluki. A music video was made, and I'll include a link in the description. Next up is Battle Symphony, which was released as a promo single on March 16th, 2017. Andrew Baluki is added again with the vocal production. I should also mention this, what I, that I personally think is the best and most memorable song on this entire album. After that is Invisible. Which was released as a promo single on May 10th, 2017. One thing I should bring up is that Jesse Shatkin co-produced the song and provided additional keyboards. Additional production was uh, was handled by Andrew Dawson and Rack, and vocal production was done by Emily Wright. He followed up with Heavy, which was released as a single on February 16th, 2017. The song is notable for featuring Kiara. And I never even heard of her prior to listening to this album. Emily Wright and Andrew Baluki worked together on the vocal production. A music video was made for the song, and I'll include a link in the description. It was followed up by Sorry For Now. Additional production was handled by Michael Keenan, and Andrew Baluki is at it once again with the vocal production. What comes next is Halfway Right. Michael Keenan and Alexander Spitz served as additional producers. As you may have guessed, Andrew Baluki was the vocal producer. 
Next song is One More Light, which was released as a single on October 3rd, 2017. Obviously, this song shares the same name as the album, and Linkin Park themselves felt it was the heart of the album. And they performed this song on Jimmy Kimmel Live. They dedicated it to, uh, to Chris Cornell, who was friends with them and tragically took his own life the day before this album was released. I should also mention that Emily Wright handled the vocal production. There is a music video that was made, and I'll include a link in the description. This album ends with Sharp Edges. The song has additional production by Rack and vocal production by Emily Wright. Personally, I think this, this song ends the album perfectly. From what I read is that this album peaked at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200. You know, the U.S. Top Alternative Albums and the U.S. Top Rock Albums. It also peaked at number eight on the U.S. Top Taste, uh, Tastemaker Albums. It wasn't until this year when this album would finally be certified platinum by the RIAA. And I helped by buying this album directly from the band's web store. When it comes to what the critics say, they mostly gave it mixed to poor reviews. In fact, it has a 46 on Metacritic. All Music, Newsday, Rock Sound, and Sputnik Music were the only publications that gave this album positive reviews. I'd argue that the reason why this album wasn't received so well is because of the band's decision to take the album in the direction of pop. This led to people accusing the band of selling out, which really pissed off Chester. I am not one of those people who accuse Linkin Park of selling out, nor do it in uh, nor do I know why they decided to go in the direction of pop. When it comes to my opinion regarding this album, I place it in the category of albums that are just mediocre. Then again, I also place St. Anger by Metallica and Father of All by Green Day in this category. I may do a video someday comparing One More Light with St. Anger to see which album is better. Of course, Linkin Park was not the only mainstream rock band to incorporate elements of pop into their music this, around this time. And because Bush, Foo Fighters, and Weezer were doing the same thing. Except I feel those bands did it better. Granted, Weezer's music has always been poppy sounding, but you get what I mean. I think this album could have been better if Linkin Park chose a different genre to venture into, such as heavy metal, crossover thrash, hardcore punk, pop punk, post grunge, or some other genre like that. To be honest, I didn't like this album when I initially heard it back in 2017 and completely avoided it for years. It wasn't until the album's fourth anniversary when I decided to give it another chance. And I thought it sounded completely different compared to what I originally heard in 2017. Not only that, but I, but I thought it sounded way better, as if I was listening to a completely different album. Now, a lot of, now I've said a lot of negative things about this album prior to this video, and I've taken that all back. Yeah. And I don't hate this album, but I think there are things that could have made it better. The songs themselves uh, each had more than one producer, and I, f and I feel this would have worked better if it was the band themselves who had produced them. Now is the part where I question you. Uh, have you listened to One More Light? If so, what do you think about it? What's your favorite song from it? What do you think could have been done to improve this album? What other genres do you think Linkin Park uh, could have gone with aside from pop? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to press the notification bell to notify future uploads. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with another review.